What license do you need for a food truck in Ohio? How much is a food truck license in Ohio? So welcome to Food Truck Freaked, YouTube's premier food truck entrepreneur channel. We are going to dive into those two questions and figure out exactly what is needed to get up and running in Ohio if you're looking to create a mobile food truck business. So welcome to Food Truck Freaks. It is Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online, which is our other YouTube channel. And this is our affiliate channel, our, our third channel that we have created about food entrepreneurship. And we are all about food truck information, what the laws are, the regulations, how to build a food truck, and even going to start interviewing some productive and prosperous food truck owners. We are going to dive into a few of these uh, necessary permits and licenses to open a food truck in Ohio. And actually talk a little bit about the six different types. Yes, believe it or not, Ohio has six variations of mobile food businesses, and they are all looked at and licensed slightly different, each one of them. So also what I'm going to do down below this video, if you need additional resources, we're going to have actually direct links to the state of Ohio's mobile food truck website. So you can actually see on that page specifically more detailed, actually quite a bit of information. Um, it's very detailed on that website. Ohio definitely has... Uh, their act together when it comes to the food truck industry and the food truck business. So let's get right into it. Number one, of course, you're going to need an EIN. Now I'm going to go through a list of really generalized permits, permits and licenses. Sorry about that, permits and licenses um, that you're going to need to have. Um, and of course, more specific, e more specifically, each of the cities and counties that you live in, they will have kind of a trickle down effect. They're going to have specifics as to what they expect. Every city and county has its own ordinances, its own regulations. So Whatever the city county that you're working in, definitely take a look at what they have there. Um, I'm going to basically go through a general uh, list of what we need to have up and running. The first one, of course, like I mentioned, the EIN, that is an employer identification number. That is for any business, actually, that operates um, in the United States. The IRS actually issues that for tax purposes, but more specifically, your food truck. So, if, for instance, any revenue that you generate that's taxable, of course, you have employees or you're going to start pay, paying employees. You need to have the e employer identification number. And it's actually uh, one of the free uh, things that you can get compared to some of the prices that we'll go over shortly for some of the other permits and licenses. But this is free. You can go to the IRS website and you can get your EIN for your business. Next up, obtain your business license. Now, this is kind of a no-brainer, uh, but believe it or not, you cannot open, obviously, bank accounts, business bank accounts, and get business loans or lines of credit with credit cards without having a business license. So to operate, every food truck must obtain a business license along with the license cost. You may be charged actually a percentage of your total sales or a yearly fee, depending on the city and the state. So believe it or not, in some situations, you may actually be charged a percentage of what you're actually making on your food truck. Now, you a special note really quick, food truck licenses and permits are subject to change in any location. So you want to make sure that you check out the local uh, food truck scene and the local food truck group Find out specifically what that city or county that they, they actually get charged to um, and follow up with that. Because sometimes even yearly they'll change. Uh, the, the cost of them, the license or permits may change. The business licenses may fluctuate differently uh, from time to time as too as they update laws. So keep that in mind as well. So next up, you've got the driver's license. Yes, believe it or not, you have to have a valid driver's license. And you might be thinking, well, this video is silly. Uh, you're telling me the driver's license, uh, that's a no-brainer too. I need. Well, believe it or not, a lot of food truck owners and food entrepreneurs that just start are unaware that if they have an employee who's driving their food truck, it's not their, their food truck, it's your food truck. If the employee is driving and they don't have a valid license and they get pulled over for any reason, that's going to fall on your shoulders. So if you're hiring employees, if you have someone assisting you, if you happen to be doing this with your brother or a family member or cousin or whatever it may be, a friend, you need to make sure, though, that everyone has a valid license and they have it with them at all times. One thing that's unique, you got to remember, is that your food truck is your moneymaker. It is your business. It's your livelihood. In some cases, if you're doing it full time. So that is a restaurant on wheels. Don't take it as a joke or as a hobby or think, oh, it's not a big deal you know, to let you know my friend drive the truck from here to there. I'm not going to be with him. I'll meet him at the food truck rally. And then he gets pulled over with no license. That could make, you could lose your permit. You could lose your truck even. And you can get a ticket or you can get fined. So make sure that valid licenses are on your vehicle at all times, whoever is driving it. All right, let's get next up. In the state of Ohio, starting a food truck, you will need a seller permit. So food truck owners in some cities and counties must apply for what's known as a seller's license. 
this is something that you definitely need to get, okay? Because it, which, what it does is it allows them to buy food and other commodities at wholesale prices without paying sales tax. So your ingredients, you know, your, your proteins, the meats, your veggies, your fruits, whatever it may be, all of your ingredients that you're using for your food production, uh, the materials to serve it on, the plates, the utensils and such, everything that's being used to create a finalized product needs to be taxed only once. You do not pay sales tax on ingredients for a product that you're going to then turn around and then charge tax again. That's double taxation. So you need to make sure that you have a seller's permit, and that's going to allow you the opportunity to go to you know, a bulk restaurant supply store or if it's Costco or Sam's or any of these big um, uh, BJ's, all of these places that have um, wholesale food, that you have the opportunity to pay for the product without paying tax when you buy it. Now, even though you have the seller, seller's permit, you need to let them know, by the way, that you have that tax exempt. Because a lot of places, for instance, like how we work, and we even have one with Walmart with our business, is that we get to buy the ingredients for our bakery and our candy business without having to pay tax at Walmart if we happen to get like bulk flour or sugar or if we're in a bind and we need just some eggs and things for the bakery. We'll go down and buy a bunch of stuff, but then we don't pay tax on it. We collect a sales tax when we sell it. So keep that in mind. Next up. The food handler's permit. So a food handler's permit is required in many cities and counties uh, for one or more employees of the food truck. Before, before the permit is actually given to you, the city and state may require one or more of your employees to go undergo what's known as a food safety course. Keep your food truck company safe. Make sure that you have it during open business hours. Make sure someone with a valid food handler's permit is on the truck. Some states will require that. And, of course, cities and counties may also create their own ordinances and say, you know what, the state of Ohio may not have offer it, but specifically in our city, we need to make sure you guys have the, the food handler's permit. So next up, we have the Department of Health Department permit. So this is your, your traditional health department inspections. You're going to apply for a health department permit. They're going to inspect the vehicle before you actually open it and make sure they give you the big thumbs up. Your food truck, and in some cases, the commissary will need to be inspected by the health department, just like any other type of a restaurant, okay, any other restaurant business. Your local health department's evaluation and approval will ensure that your food is obviously prepared properly, it's kept properly, it's stored properly, and any of the, of the cleaning and hygienic side to keeping your vehicle clean, that's what the health department's going to look for. Uh, take a look also if you're brand new to our channel, we're going to have a brand new video coming up soon about what the food truck health inspection list will be like and what you can expect when you get your inspections. Okay, next up is the fire certificate from the fire department. So one of the other safety inspections that you're going to get is based upon the fire department's inspection of your food truck. Now, actually, we had the same similar thing. We actually had our bakery, our Italian bakery. We had the fire department come in, and they made sure that everything was in there properly working, functioning correctly. The one unique thing, though, is fire uh, food trucks, the fire department looks at them as a potential um, possible uh, fire starter when you've got propane, you've got generators, you've got different electrical equipment that uh, needs to make sure that it's applied and put in properly. You make sure that it's installed in the vehicle. It's working 100%. So the fire certificate and fire inspections are something that's really crucial to the safety of not only you, but to the employees and your customers when they're coming up to your food truck that there's obviously nothing that could potentially happen in the meantime. So double check. Those are a handful of traditional permits, things that are obviously needed in many locations when it comes to licenses and permits. Now, there may be local regulations that limit where and when some or all of these mobile units actually operate, so keep that in mind. So for an example, this may be like on a sidewalk vendor or what they call in Ohio a peddler's permit, which is issued by the city. Always contact local permit and zoning departments okay, for additional information and requirements because it fluctuates from city to city. So remember that all the equipment and licensed mobile units must be of a commercial grade too. So that's something that sometimes when you're kind of building out your own food truck, many new food truck entrepreneurs don't think of that. Um, and they kind of just get random pieces of equipment and then they don't pass an inspection. You need to make sure that all the equipment is, is um, accredited by an agency known as NSF and also UL listed and, and additional ones as well. Okay, So those are two of the main ones, NSF and of course UL listed uh, commercial equipment that needs to be on the specific ve commercial vehicle at all times. Nothing residential, no uh, equipment that could be found in your home or food grade, that type of stuff that could be uh, put on the kitchen countertop at home cannot be used in a food truck, so keep that in mind. So as I mentioned in the introduction, they actually have six different types of uh, mobile food vending um, licenses and inspections and types of vehicles that are allowed. 
Now, I'm not going to go too detailed into every single one of these because I'm actually going to, like I said, leave you some information below. The link I'll leave below is actually directly to some of this information I'm relaying to you. Uh, number one, they have concession trailers and trucks. That's one type of mobile food business. They also have one classified as a push cart. Of course, you know those. Those are much smaller, uh, kind of on wheels in a sense, and it can be pushed by one person and operated by one person. They have also knockdown concessions, frozen food trucks and carts, which is kind of interesting. Um, I guess there's a lot of, in Ohio, they have a lot of uh, food truck businesses that actually go around with frozen foods and deliver them. Catering-type delivery trucks, mobile cookers, and barbecue pits. Now, that finishes off the list, at number six. Many of those barbecue pits and mobile cookers are literally like smokers, huge, gigantic smokers on wheels, the size you would find in a restaurant. So one of those six is basically where your business would fall under, and each one has its own types of requirements. So double-check that. So once a complete standard inspection must be completed by the licensing health department in Ohio at least once during the licensing year. In addition, inspections may be conducted as necessary by the health district and health department within those cities of Ohio. So that'll pretty much wrap it up. That is a gist of the things you need on the legal side. Now, of course, make sure that you create a contractual agreement if you're going to go into a partnership too. If it's not just you, make sure that you, if you're going with a, your brother, your cousin, a friend, a neighbor, a, a, a fellow chef, if you're going to go into this with a partnership, make sure that you spell out in that partnership agreement. This is something that a lot of friends get, you know, they get, get an idea of starting a food truck and then they end up starting one and things don't go, you know, plan, as planned and then the business goes under. But then who's liable for what? How much ownership does everyone have? What are the responsibilities of those owners as a partner? Make sure that you elaborate all of those details on your contract and you both sign them and have copies. If you're not familiar with it, get a lawyer to draw up a, some type of a partnership agreement, contractual agreement, but make sure you have it on paper because you're only going to protect yourself. And of course, get food business insurance. Now, if you're not really familiar with where you can get food truck insurance, we also got that for you as well. Down below in the descriptions, you can click on those insurance things and check out those websites that offer f food truck insurance specifically for mobile food businesses. So if you have any more questions about how to start a food truck business in Ohio, let us know down below in the comments. If this video was helpful and informative, give us a big thumbs up. Stay with us because our brand new channel, Food Truck Freaks, is going to be loaded with a lot of great content and videos. So be sure to subscribe and then hit the bell notification. As we upload videos, you'll get a notification about that and um, we'll help you guys out and give you some great resources. I'll see you guys on our next video.